long ago on the plain of Zendikar, atop a high mesa in the region of Ondu, sat a prison. The prison of an entity the plain's denizens knew by just a single name, Omnath. Supposedly a divine manifestation of the ferocious mana of Zendikar, Omnath's name could be found in some incarnation in many creation myths of the plain. Some even called Omnath the flickering heart, the origin of the primal mana that pulses throughout Zendikar. And if you traveled to the top of that soaring Anduin Mesa, through the dense forest that crowns it, and into a murky mire at the grove's heart where shadows move and twist, you could find the binding circle that surrounds the entrance to Omnath's prison. A complex arrangement of strange globular swamp growths, stone hedrons, and animal bones, with a huge pit in the center that leads deep into the ground. According to some, it led into the Soul Stair, an infinitely long spiral staircase leading down into the bowels of the world, the place where Omnath, a being composed of raw mana, was imprisoned. Twice a year, religious pilgrims from across Zendikar travel to the prison of Omnath to perform the Ritual of Lights, a ceremony designed to protect the world from the release of Omnath. In their view, Omnath was malevolent, chaotic, primeval force, and its release would represent the destruction of most forms of life. Although skeptics wondered whether anything actually lurks there or whether such a thing is even possible, those pilgrims encircled the site with 77 candles and chant prayers and songs, believing that the ritual strengthens the magical walls that make up the prison. But for them, or for us, Omnath's prison would not last forever. Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and today I want to dive into looking at Omnath, from where it started in original Zendikar block all the way to its newest incarnation in March of the Machine. What's Omnath's story? What other designs were made for its cards? What is its history in Magic? Let's continue on. In Worldwake, as the world began to change heading into the release of the Eldrazi, the prison of Omnath was destroyed. And after ages, Omnath, Locus of Mana, was released into the world. And so was the card. Created with this unique story character in mind, this card took Upwelling, a popular casual magic card at the time, and put it on a creature as a one-sided version. It actually started as a much more straightforward version, simply a green mana to put a plus one plus one counter on Omnath, and removing a plus one plus one counter to add green. But this was the much more exciting to read version of that card. Some other things changed around too. For example, the card originally cast just a single green mana, if you can believe it. It also started as a 0-0, something we often do for creatures that constantly grow to make them easier to count, but was given base stats of 1-1 one, one so that you didn't cast it with no green mana in your pool and have it die. Omnath came out and was a hit. While it wasn't a standard all-star, it immediately found its way into all kind of casual constructed decks, including the people playing a small format called Elder Dragon Highlander. Eh, that'll probably never go anywhere, right? And that was the last we saw of Omnath for five years. Setting, Zendikar. Location, Kozilek Warped Cavern. Action, show Omnath, the legendary elemental from the original Zendikar block. It is enraged by the Eldrazi destruction of its plane, and we can see strands of red rippling through its green energy like red ink in water. Razor sharp red stones orbit around it. In this shot, Omnath looms at the edge of a cliff in a cavern that has been warped by Kozilek. Like Omnath's reference, energy flows out of it, only this time it pools on either side of it like a heavy fog, and we can see the energy forming into vague replications of Omnath itself. This is the art description given to Brad Rigney to create what is, according to EDHREC, the second most popular red green commander in history, Omnath, Locus of Rage. And for those wondering why it's not number one, well, blame Tovalar. It might seem like a natural thing to make another Omnath, but in design, it didn't even start as an intentional Omnath. 
called Crash of Zendikar. And if I know lead designer Eric Lauer, I'd guess it's referencing Crash of Rhinos. It did something a little different in its first incarnation, make a bunch of itself. It was eight mana at the time and did this. When Crash of Zendikar enters the battlefield, it deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of creatures you control, named Crash of Zendikar. And then Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of Crash of Zendikar, except it's not legendary. As you can see though, it evolved over time to just create 5-5 five, five elementals. A lot more reasonable than spawning copies of itself that would in turn spawn copies of itself, and so on. But with this change, it did something very cool and notable for Omnath, become Elementals Matter. And this would become very, very important for a topic I'll get to here in a second. The card, once again, didn't really hit standard much, but certainly cemented itself as a Commander All-Star. Let's skip forward a few years. Omnath Locus of Rage has come out and been a fan favorite after adding in one color to itself. Yanni Skalnik is working on Magic 2020, which of course released in 2019. But I digress, that's a discussion for another day. Anyway, the set has this elemental theme, and it's got these cool high rarity legends that would go on to be a cycle, Kalia, Kathis, and Kaikar for three examples. And while working on a card called Elemental Monarch at the time, it was realized this could be Omnath. I'm not sure exactly who called it out, but especially given the Elemental Matters bit that ended up on last Omnath, it was a perfect fit. For a while, it was just red and green with a blue activated ability, but eventually moved into the full three color version you see today. Elementals, damage, lands, yeah, that's an Omnath. It predictably saw play in people trying Elementals decks, but otherwise it wasn't seen too much in competitive play. The next Omnath, though, would change that. Omnath is a being of pure mana, and when the Eldrazi awoke, Omnath began to change. It absorbed more and more mana, embodying more and more colors. The Eldrazi were gone, but Omnath was still growing. What was its goal? And if it was truly Zendikar incarnate, what does the plane want, and how will it get it? Welcome to Zendikar Rising. Just the next year, with another return to Zendikar, we got a fourth Omnath, this time picking up white Omnath, Locus of Creation. And with this one, the team knew they wanted to do an Omnath. They tried a lot of other designs. Here's one such example. When Omnath, Locus of Creation enters the battlefield, draw a card. And then Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain three life. So that part looks kind of similar to what we ended up with. But then there's this interesting part. When Omnath, Locus of Creation dies, add white, blue, red, green. Until the beginning of your next end step, you don't lose mana. Interesting, but eventually they came to the final version that escalated by the number of times you had a land enter this turn. It was sweet, splashy, and an exciting build around. Now this card, this one ended up being quite strong. Thanks to mana fixing like Lotus Cobra, easily powering out Omnath on turn three, this four color card started to tear up standard. While four color cards are balanced by their difficulty to cast, when your color fixing is good enough to get around that, they can become a real problem. The fact it refunded you a card right away on top of everything else just helped push Omnath even further over the top. It was dominating the format. Fortunately, when it comes to imprisoning Omnath, Wizards of the Coast is a bit more successful than the Zendikar Pilgrims of old. Omnath was banned in standard, truly living up to his imprisonment pedigree. It's been three years since the last Omnath, and the question from all of you has been pretty constant. When will you see the five color Omnath? Well, the time is March of the Machine. But Omnath fans, you might have wished you hadn't seen him like this with Omnath. Locus of all. 13 years after its first appearance, the Phyrexians have completed him in more ways than one. Its first ability throws all the way back to that original Omnath, while its second ability tells you to play a deck full of three plus color cards and it gives you mana for them. What path will this follow? Commander All-Star? Standard Breakout? Well, much like everybody now asking me if we'll do an Omnath with colorless mana in the cost for a sixth one, only time will tell. If you enjoyed this in-depth look at Omnath, please let me know in the comments down below. This was a unique kind of video for me, covering a single character, and if you like it, please say so 
maybe I'll do more like it. And definitely tell me what you think about the new Omnath. Otherwise, I'll talk with you again soon. And until then, may you find new colors of mana to add into yourself. You got this. Goblin Savant and Glorious Dragonkin. What do these have to do with each other at all? Well, in the Invitational that Jens Thorin won, the one where he made Psalms and Malacrum, Chris Pakula and Brian Kibler both submitted cards as well. They didn't win the Invitational, so their cards didn't get made. But I imagine them here as if they had won and got the artifact treatment like Jens did.